Well, hey, good to be with you guys. Um, how does it feel to be in the best office in all of Family First Life? Woo, yeah, awesome. Awesome. I mean, like, I mean, serious, like environment dictates success. You know what I mean? Like if you put yourself in a different environment, typically your behavior changes. You know, one of the best things I ever did going back 13 years, because I've been in the business now since I was 19, I'm now 32, soon to be 33, was plug into a place where there was other top performers, top producers, um, managers, people building a business, and, and really just be a sponge, you know? Um, my work ethic, my intensity, my energy, my body language, everything started to shift and change. And, and it's sometimes it's hard to see because it's daily, right? It's like when you go to the gym, the next morning you wake up and you look for a six pack, it probably hasn't shown up yet. You know what I mean? Like, there's more of a process still to be had. But over a period of time, sometimes you don't even notice it. Sometimes like, man, you look, you look good. You know, you lose some weight. You're like, shoot, maybe I did. And, and I think that's how it happens. You know, I remember getting back with some of the people that I used to hang out with um, prior to getting my license and getting plugged into a different environment. And, and I was just like, man, I could tell how much I've grown because of where they were still standing. And I had moved, you know, and the stuff they were saying and how they were saying, I'm like, I used to, I used to be like that. Like I used to say stuff like that. You know what I mean? I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that, but that's a good thing. It's a good thing when you start talking to somebody you used to talk about and everything that they're saying, the way they think, how they think. And you're thinking like, wow, I think a lot different now. I've grown quite a bit. And, and you only really know it when you have something to con contrast it with. And so plugging into this meet, this office with, you know, Julius and Brandon, you got an office here, right? Yes, and, and Grady's got an office here. I mean, is Ashley got an office here? Does Nina, does Nina, is she, yeah. oh, I mean, are you kidding me? Like, if you're not plugged into here all the time, I'm just saying like, you should quit now. <laughs> I, and I'm dead serious because I love you. I'm gonna tell you the truth because your belief level is so low, it's not gonna work anyways. You know what I mean? Like I was, I remember driving, my, my local sales training office when I got started was Phoenix, Arizona. Now I don't live in Phoenix, Arizona. It was a five to six hour drive, but yet I would do it and I get back late at night and, um, and I did it because I wanted to get around good people. If you guys are within, so that means if you're within six hours, you should be here. Does that make sense? Yeah. It worked for me, it'll probably work for you. But, but you just plug in and what'll happen is, like I said, the behavior starts changing, right? You know, it's like, you just don't know what you don't know. And people do what people do. And so that, that's the goal is if you can plug in and you can see how Julius holds himself and how Brandon holds himself, just the way they respond to things. Like it's just different. You know what I mean? And you start to, you start to glean from that, how to dial the intensity to which you dial. I remember I thought dialing, you know, leads was just like you dial one and then you stare at the next lead. You know what I mean? Like I would analyze the signature. Like I was convinced that if, if the signature had double loops, it was an aggressive person. And I don't know if I wanted to call him yet because I was trying to work my way up, build some tolerance because I was new, you know? And, and what happens is between one dial and the next dial, it's not like faith is built or now I'm rooted, I can do it. No, it's doubt, disbelief, discouragement between one dial and the next. So when you can attack the phones and crush it and you're making one dial back, now I didn't know what that looked like. You can tell me, but when I see it, it's different, right? And so I start dialing with two phones. So if you don't have two phones, I get two phones. You know, and I dial with both. When you're calling one lead and, and it's dialing, call the next lead. And you can say, what if they both pick up? Hang up on one. And then when you call them back, guess what? They're more likely to answer because telemarketers typically don't hang up on the person that they actually got on the line. So like, who the heck hung up on me? And they want it more, right? It's like dating. You guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's way worse. I'm not interested, but you know, you really are interested. So, so it's the same thing, but if you could have two phones, so that, that, that taught me different level of intensity. Now I'm crushing both phones. And, and, and now it's like, even my mindset is set higher where I'm like, I'm going to get the job done. I'm going to win at all costs. I got a whatever it takes mindset. And, and it could be as simple as just having two phones. You know what I mean? And dialing like that, calling three times back to back. I saw how they responded when somebody hung up on them, right? Because the way I responded when somebody hung up on me, it was like, all right, you want to fight? They want to fight me. You know, it's like, no, they're over the phone. It ain't that big of a deal. You know what I mean? And so it was just different. It was like, no big deal. They just called the next one right away. And, and so what I'm saying is, guys, you should plug in to the office as frequently as you possibly can. Environment is a big, big deal. It makes a big, big difference on behavior. You know, I was in Lake Arrowhead probably six months ago. My daughter, I got four girls, 
pray for me. Um, my five-year-old was like, Dad, look, what is it? What is that? What fish is that? And it was it was a fish like this big, and it was a big goldfish, you know. Now to her, goldfish is like this big. You know what I mean? And it swims in her little baby fish tank. And I said, that's, that's a goldfish. Said, dad, that's not a goldfish. And, I, and so I was like, all right, good. I get I get a, a dad teaching moment. Let me talk to you about environment. And so I, I thought it was my opening to give her a lesson. But I talked about, like, you know, and, and I know it's cliche and you've heard it before, but like you, you grow to the environment you're in. That's why the fish was bigger. It was in Lake Arrowhead, not in a fish bowl that was $4.99 from Walmart. It's different, right? And so a lot of times, you know, we, we've not grown to our capacity because we've been swimming in a $4.99 Walmart bowl. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is like, yeah, this is a different business. This is a different deal right here. And so just kind of realize that, you know, if you can just get up and get here, that's the, probably the biggest battle that you're going to win every day. Because once you're here, a lot of things that you struggle with, it's going to be hard not to do what you should be doing. I'll give you an example, and then I'll move on to a different topic. But I just want you guys to, I think this is a big deal because I think some of you are like, I think it's good. And I believe also your level of performance is dependent on your level of appreciation. So if you really appreciate, know what you have your hands on, you're just going to treat it different. You're not going to take advantage of it. If you take advantage of it, eventually it will leave you. You won't show up. You know what I mean? And so I went to the Dream Center out in Los Angeles a while back. And, and, and they take in a bunch of like criminals, you know, not, you know they could be criminals coming out of the jail system um, that have committed crime. They could be homeless. They could be on drugs. Um, it could be someone that's been a rape victim. I mean, like just, they, they've got, it's, it's pretty incredible, the different stories, you know? And, and, there, and there was people there that, that had like four teardrops on their eyes, you know? Because, you know, teardrop means, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so like, and, and their story, you're like, oh my God, like it's crazy, but they've got this crazy amount of joy and positivity with them. And they don't have nothing. Like they're there because a lot of times they have a place to live. They're trying to get off drugs. And, 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 I, and I asked Pastor Matthew, because like when we're walking by, they're like, hey, Pastor Matthew, how are you doing? Like positive, everybody's greeting. Their vocabulary is almost kind of similar. And, and he said, well, on the streets, there it's like it's abnormal to be like that what's normal is to be closed off hard and heart nobody in don't trust nobody that's what's normal and so you don't get that they conform he said here it's completely opposite like it's abnormal if you're not positive uplifting encouraging joyful he said it's so opposite that they just conform because they don't want to be the outcast. Does that make sense? So there are certain things about me and there's certain things about you being brand new that when we break down the simplicity of this business, such as leads, phones, and in-home, that's very simple. But there's things about you that you're going to have to excavate that will have to be un unveiled, so to speak, that you have to work on, whether that's attitude, posture, the way you see yourself, how you see yourself through your past lens and trying to reprogram the way you're going to, there's a lot of stuff I'm not trying to get too deep with you. I mean, I know Scott, you're like, it's 715, dude, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, this is more of like a 7 p.m. kind of stuff. But, but, <laughs> you, there's, you'll, you, but when you get into an environment that reveals that, that stuff will get worked out. Like, I was a disaster and didn't know I was a disaster in many different ways. And so, yes, I got better on the phones. Yes, I got, I get, yeah, I got all that. But I just developed, I became a, you know, I just was able to work on things that was holding me back, right? Whether that was responses, frustration, anger, looking at things with the wrong viewpoint, making long-term decisions based off of short-term outcomes, calling five leads and three of them not picking up. And now I say this, I label the lead vendor as, as a bad lead. Like these leads suck. Well, you can't value anything above the label you give it that's with human beings and that's with leads and that's with everything so you label something well you just you just litted the value you can give it so i see agents all the time do that man these leads are this well you just labeled that lead dude you're not going to get more than what you just spoke that name to it right and so you know you just realize that as you plug in and 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 you know there's a lot of stuff that might need to be excavated so you can elevate to the level that you want to be so that it will be worked out and that's just the way it is like i think i'm hoping i think different next month than i do this month 
I hope next year I see things different. I look at things different because if I'm not different, my business can look different. Internal growth will always precede external growth and what you visually see. And so that's the goal. How can I continue to develop? And it's, it's a process. You know, I, I, I think different now than I did a year ago. So the business looks different. And that's why when I call Shawn Michael a lot of times and he says, this is how you should approach this, or this is what you need to do. And I'm like, dude, that makes no sense. You know that, right? But I don't tell him that it doesn't make no sense. My mind don't think that it doesn't make no sense, right? <laughs> but my mind, I'm like, dude, I don't know how that makes any sense. But the reality is it shouldn't make any sense because his thought process is here. My thought process is here. And so it shouldn't make sense. So as you guys are new, like who in here has been with Family First Life less than 90 days? <clears throat> so that, that's more than half the room. So just realize that it shouldn't make sense. If it made sense, then you'd already be at that level. But it doesn't have to make sense for you to take action. That was probably the single best thing I ever did was just say, I'm gonna be coachable. If Julius tells me to go stand in the, in the, in the corner and stare at it, like I'm in timeout, I'm gonna just assume that there's $100,000 that's hitting one of those ceiling tiles and he's gonna drop it from the ceiling and yeah. hit me in the face. That's what I'm assuming. Opposed to like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I stare at the, the wall? I'm just thinking there's a purpose behind it. Most top producers stare at walls. I don't know, I'm gonna do it though. <laughs> um, but that's just how I saw the saying. Like I, I, I came to the conclusion, which I think this is healthy for everybody in here that's new to kind of to, to think about or, or work from this thought process. The thought process is in this business is pretty unique. Like what, what's your name, man? Sawyer. Sawyer? No. Dude, how do you, you can't suck with that name. You know that, right? <laughs> like Sawyer, dude? Like my name is just Paul. That doesn't get nobody excited. Sawyer, it's like, I'm gonna go conquer a village or something. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you, dude, if you suck, you're letting everybody down just so you know. So I would just encourage you to wake up earlier. Um, so, so you look at like, if I told, so you're like, if you told me to do something and, and you hired me in my mind, I could think two ways is Sawyer selfish and he's, and it's just for his own good. And then if he is, he still wants me to succeed because if I do good, he does good. So if he's selfish, selfish people don't want to hurt their own self. They're selfish. So if he's selfish, he's not going to want to hurt himself. He wants me to do well because if I do well, he does well. Now, if Sawyer's selfless, he wants, he'll do whatever he can to, to help me win because he just wants to put me first and it's about, it ain't about money, it ain't about him, it's about me. Well, he still wants me to win. Both lead to me winning. So if he's already charted the path, he's already kind of gone the way and he says, do this or don't do it. I'm just, I should listen. That makes sense. I shouldn't sit back and say, well, let, let me tell you what. I'm not too sure about that. I don't know if I feel like doing that. Let me break this down. This is probably one of the biggest things. All right. And this is not what I want to talk about at all, but it's just where we're at now. So we're going to work from here. So, so like when I hired my, uh, my recruiter, Victoria, she, she was a data analyst. You guys know data analyst doesn't typically, you don't think like recruiter, data analyst, same, same kind of person. All right. Um, <laughs> Think data analysts like stare at the wall that's what you think you know you don't think recruit so she was a recruit but, but i i knew she, she was dependable she had a great attitude um held herself well took responsibility and accountability when i said what happened with the lot last job what took place she wasn't like they sucked and this and that like didn't play no victim mind. she was like i think i could have done this better but this is where i was at it was just really good so i'm, I'm gonna give her a shot now work with me on this because this is a big deal because you guys are half the room's new so this is very applicable to you I think it's split with everybody. So I said, Victoria, call these resumes, <clears throat> right? She looked like she wanted to cry. You wanna know why? Because she was uncomfortable and she should be because she's never done it before. That was normal. That, that's a justified feeling. She was not comfortable at all. But guess what she did? She called him. You wanna know why? If she didn't, that'd be a bad look for the first day on the job. Like, no, no, no I just don't feel like it, Paul. Like, oh, bad, my bad, didn't, shouldn't, shouldn't have hired you. Um, I'll pay you for the last four hours just to help. Here's a bonus, we'll pay you for the whole day. I mean, it would have been done, obviously. And she's not confused, you're not confused. That's the way it would work. Exactly. So she did it. Now, she didn't think that made sense because she was working off a feeling, but she needed to do it because she was wanting the job. Only in hindsight, after the six, seven hours of her dialing, 
was it revealed that that in fact was the best thing for her to do? Cause she was like, wow, what I thought was, wasn't what I thought wasn't was this makes sense. I get it now. This is how I should be dialing. I understand it. I feel a lot better only through the actual experience was, was it, was the value so high, right? But if I just know if she was self-employed and I said, Julius, your goal is to get 10 contracts this week, right? That's a goal. You got to call these resumes, here's a resume, here's a script, get after it. I would have came back in seven hours and she would have said, well, I feel really good now. I'm feeling pretty good. I've been watching, I've watched seven and a half podcasts on my half halfway through my eighth podcast i've got i've been journaling take a look at my notes i've journaled i've, re I've re rehearsed the script and then and then when she first made her first dial she realized that it was all a bunch didn't do anything she's like holy crap that's not what i expected at all the only way to get perfect is to take crazy massive action and then follow with course correction you take massive you, you try to like get course correction before you've got nothing to course correct you're just going to think something different than what it actually is. And that's applicable to everything. If you're waiting to go door knock, if you're waiting to go make, you know, three dials back to back, if you're waiting to get comfortable to invest a thousand bucks a week in leads, if you're waiting to go four or five hours on a travel trip until you feel a little bit, whatever you're waiting to do, that's going to kill you. There's freedom of coachability. Just being like, all right, I'm going to do it. This is what the system works. I know I don't feel it, but I know it's going to work because why would I have bad direction if a rising tide raises all ships? Why, why? So you just do it. Does that make sense? This is, and this is the thing that is a big deal. When somebody says, what's the number one reason why somebody doesn't succeed at family first life? It's because the self-employed part the self part and employee part. <laughs> Does it make sense? Like, you know, just doing what you feel like doing, you know, like, yes. And it's almost like a, isn't it like a movement? Like do you boo? Is that, you do you. <laughs> I know, dude, I'm trying to make myself a new me. Yeah. I do me. I don't want to do what I feel like doing. I feel like sleeping in sometimes. I feel like eating bad a lot of times. I feel like that's what I feel like doing. If I do me. I'm going to look like a wood tick and I'm going to have no money in my account. So I don't want to do me. I want to, do a different me. I want to develop me. I don't want to do me. I want to develop me. Can I be better today than I was yesterday? That's what I want to do. You know, my daughter said, I said, you said it again. I'm going to beat you. And this is recorded, so I didn't say that. I, 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 I was like, what did you just say? So I don't feel like doing this. So I'm like, oh, I'll tell you what you feel like doing. You feel like doing what I tell you to do. Now we're going to talk about the whole feelings and action concept and how you actually feel fulfilled by doing something you don't want to do and doing it. Um, but it's that kind of stuff. It, it's like you get self-employed and you've never been self-employed. Who in here has never been self-employed before? This is your first self-employed position. This is a good amount of you, 30%. So this is the stuff that'll make a big difference for you. It's, it'll be natural to say, like you get this entitlement, like I'm self-employed, you know? And somebody call you up. Now you can choose to do what you want to do. So you have your cousin call you up. Hey, you want to go for a barbecue? You're like, hey, man, it's Wednesday, three o'clock course. Who doesn't want a barbecue Wednesday at three o'clock? I'll just push back my appointments. Really? Yeah, man. I'm I'm the boss. Why would I not? Like, you didn't know? I forgot to tell you, dude. I run my own business, dude. I'm sorry. You work. I know where you work, but I'm a business owner. You know what I mean? I apologize. I forgot to tell you that. That's how it works. You stop. Yeah, I remember my wife calling me like, hey, you want to go to SeaWorld tomorrow? I'm like, that's Tuesday. That seems like a good day to go to SeaWorld with family. I'm like, what? And all of a sudden you realize that self-employed when you don't have structure and non-negotiable, it means unemployed. You ain't making no money. Right. And so you got to realize that it's actually more responsibility. It's actually more of a weight than it is freedom. Now you can manage, put together your own schedule structure in such a way that that works for you, which I guess that is freedom, but more of a weight because you have to structure it and you have to be, you have to create non-negotiables. You have to pretend like you're going to get fired if you don't do these things. Just like when you're an employee, think about whatever you did before, whatever you did before, your first time doing it, you were uncomfortable and that's normal. So just realize that it should feel like that. So what you got to figure out, I wonder, is what about your day or what's one thing that you should be doing that you're not doing that you're waiting to get comfortable with or you're waiting to feel like doing it.
to go out there and then it's going to increase your business. Is that getting an office space? Is that getting a staff? Is that getting your second staff? Is it getting your third staff? Is it investing more in leads? Is it running a bonus program for your agents? Is it, what is it, what is it for you? Is it waking up earlier and making sure you can, you know, plan your days and thinking about your day at late at night and asking yourself pointed questions. Should I have promoted myself based off of today's success or should I have fired myself based off what I did today? And, and really being honest and straightforward because you are both. Just like when I have a conversation with my staff because we're missing the boat, I've got to be the person now that does that for myself, right? It's good and bad again. It's good because you're like, I don't got that person calling me. I don't got the pressure. Boss was a this and that, and I don't have him no more. That's great, but now you're the boss. You got to do it, you know? You got to do what was being done before or else you're just going to flounder right you want to raise your basis so so that's one thing i tell you guys is, is regardless of where you're at what's the one thing that you need to do more of do less of put that down and take action on it is it getting the edge maybe maybe that edge gives you confidence that gives you more success maybe that edge is getting here and dialing at 7 30 a.m because most people make dial, guess what most people do? They make their first dial at what time? And I wouldn't even say most people. I'd say, I'd say maybe half. And a lot of people probably make it at nine, 10. And they show up at 10 o'clock. I'm like, what, what have you been doing? Oh man, you know, I had some stuff to take care of. I do, what if you, what if this was a job? What if my employee walked in and she said, I'm sorry, I had some stuff to handle. It's 10 a.m. What? But so, so the thing is this, if you're doing that, Think about how bad that's hurting you. The two hours hurts you a lot too, because most appointments are booked from 7.30 a.m. to 10. That's a fact. But more than that is, is the level of compromise that you're living at. It's gonna kill your business. Now when that last appointment is at nine, you know, eight o'clock and you're not gonna get there until nine, guess what you'll convince yourself of? Man, it's an hour, I'm an hour late. They're probably sleeping. I don't want, I don't want to harm and wake up that, that, that family, like what kind of guy, what kind of, who, who knocks on a door at nine o'clock at night? Like, I can't do that. And you tell yourself some bull crap like that. Same stuff you told yourself when you got here at 10 a.m. The extra mile, the little bit extra, that is where the biggest benefit comes from. It's like working out. I think that you shouldn't count your reps until it hurts. Then you should start counting. Because I'm, I'm like, what is that? A little bit, you do the extra two. The two was only 20% of the overall amount of activity, but that 20% will led to 90% of the gains that you had. It's the way it works. So, so just think about that. Well, I wonder what it is for you, but maybe it's dialing the lead back to back three times and you've not yet done that. Maybe it's door knocking and you've not done it. Maybe it's more planfulness. Maybe it's waking up at 5 a.m. and you're waking up at 7. Maybe it's making sure that when you get up in the morning, you kind of like start with some gratitude because right now you're stuck in the familiar past and it's giving you a, a new predictable future. You're stuck in the whole, you know, victimization and this took place here and I want any good here. Maybe this won't work out all this. And you're working from those emotions as far as that goes. And so you're getting the same thing here. Maybe you got to take back control and start with some gratitude. Maybe it's affirmations. Maybe it's starting to pop. I don't know. Maybe you need to listen to more calls between appointments. Maybe at, at, at night, you, you know, less Netflix, right? I said, I told my, I said this at, at, on a call I was recording in my, my 13 year old daughter, which is helpful because she gives me the right interpretation sometimes. I just don't know what something means. You know what I mean? I said, you know, for me, I just, when I got started, I was so infatuated with this business that it's all I could think about because I was positive I was going to be successful. I was 19 and I pumped septic tanks. So I didn't have like this <laughs> background that's, that's, that convinced myself that I was going to be successful. It wasn't like because I had done this, 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 of course. It was just, I just saw that everybody, these people, everybody, all these different people could do it. So I convinced myself I was going to win. There was no shadow of a doubt in my mind I was going to, I was going to win. By the way, that's where you got to start. Because where you start at belief, typically you'll provide evidence of the conclusion. You're going to work it out the way it starts. So my mind was like, I didn't think it was gonna happen overnight. I knew it wasn't gonna happen overnight, but I knew it was gonna happen. And so late at night I was watching podcasts, 
YouTube, taking notes, nonstop. What I did, I was obsessed. I wonder if you get a little bit more obsessed, how much faster the success shows up. You know what I mean? So I was talking on this call and I was like, you know, a lot of you guys do too much Netflix and Netflix and chilling. And my daughter's like, you, you do know that's not what you think it means, right? I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, it's not what you think it means, Dad. I got it. So sometimes you just need one of your kids to give you some clarification. You know what I mean? But by the way, a lot of times the way you see your business, things taking place, it's not what it means either. Just so you know that. Like when you have seven no-shows, it doesn't mean it ain't going to work for you. And that's not what it means. It's like the whole Netflix and chill thing. It's not what it means, Dad. It's not what it means. That's not what it means. Joe Miller went 21 no sales in a row before he made his first sale. I didn't know that. I was like, dude, I didn't know you were that bad. <laughs> no, that's really bad dude. I mean, it's like it's almost like a good and a bad thing that you tell people that. That was good because you're pers persistent and you persevered, but God, you sucked, you know? <laughs> He's like, yeah. But think about it. What if you would have what if you thought that meant that this wasn't for him? Like that's a sign. And he would have quit on his 20th no sale. I mean, think about that. That's not what it means. That's not what it means. So, so having the right interpretation that everything that does take place is going to serve you well in getting better. His interpretation was, man, if I could go 21 and make a sale, it's going to work eventually. I, I'm obviously a disaster. I got to figure things out. I think he was probably overly direct, just knowing Joe. He's like, probably made him salute him before. You know, they sat down and like, do some military push-ups and let's get in our in-home. I don't know what he did, but it didn't work. All right, but he fixed it. And now he's got great stories to tell us, the, 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 you know, agents he's working with. Somebody has five no sales. I mean, who's better to say, hey, it'll be all right. Let me tell you about what I did. Because what they do is, guess what? They see Joe and Joe's success now. They see that Joe. And so they, they compare their behind the scenes, their five no sales to Joe today. Does that make sense? By the way, if you're doing that, that's going to kill you. Like, you can't compare yourself. You, you don't know where they started. You don't know what it looked like. So I have agents all the time doing that stuff. Oh, man, I don't, this person, like, dude, I know that. I knew that person when they got started. They're, they're way worse than you. Jack, you sucked for like four years. I was like, <laughs> dude, like, but he, it'd be still, he made it, the good news is he made more money barely than what he was making before and barely could get by. But now Jack Hughes on the way to get a deal with integrity. He was awful in the beginning. He tried to convince me and Andrew like seven different times how leads don't work. <laughs> Like literally, like you don't understand. They don't work. These clients don't. You can't book appointments, and not just once. We had to do it three times. We sat down and said, "Jack, give us your leads." We called him and booked appointments in front of him, and then he still was like, "No." <laughs> like, what? Dude, you're right here. That one said no to you. They said yes to us. Is it them or you? Like three times. I'm not making that up. I don't know what his deal was. Like he had just like again. It could have been. So I don't know, but I'm just telling you, that's what you've got to make your mind of. When that happens, what will be your interpretation of it, right? I think two questions you should ask, and I'm going to jump into something different, should be, what does it matter? So when something happens, like, what does it matter? I want to go do this barbecue. I want to go, like, I don't know if I commit. What does it matter? Give yourself prior. What does it matter gives you it prioritizes whatever you're, you're looking at. I had, I had five people and I pick up the phone. What does it matter? You're in the relative of you being here and this is your career. It's you're talking to one hour phone calls. What, what does it matter? The priorities of it. You know what I mean? Um, my batch of leads, I didn't get, what does it matter? Like, what is it really? You're talking one batch. Like, what does it matter? So it gives priority to it. And then what does it mean? You know what I mean? Like, what does it mean? What's the interpretation? How are you going to take it? Is it going to be a negative or a positive? How can you use it to grow your business? Because you're self-employed. So what does it matter? What does it mean? I think those are two questions that it's, it's good and healthy to ask when you're presented with stuff. Because be clear, and I'll, I'll wrap up with this and go into something different. But, and I'm not making this up to articulate my point at a different level. It's true. I, I call, I'd call Andrew up and he'd do the same thing. We're in the field. I was in the field like, this is like my sixth year in the business. I mean, I had already been a top 10 producer for six straight years. And I'd have a bad day where I got smoked. Like, you know, six no-shows, three no-shows. I'm like, I remember, I remember thinking in my mind, maybe I got lucky for six years. 
<laughs> I'm not making that up. I swear to you. And I think, and I start dwelling on it. Like, oh my God, I've been lucky. I've now, now it's revealed the fact that I really do suck. I knew I wasn't that good in the beginning. And somehow I got lucky for six years. And now it's finally being revealed. Everybody's going to know that I'm a fraud. <laughs> I was lucky for six years, but I'm really terrible at this business. That's what I was thinking. I'm not making that up either. I'm telling you, I would think that all the time. Like, I'm like, I've been lucky. What I'm saying is it doesn't matter what success, your thoughts are, it is what it is. You better get, you better have some perspective. What does it matter? What does it mean? And get, and get your mind right on that. All right, so let's, let's break down this real quick. So if we look at, and then we'll do some phone stuff and then I'll, and then I'll get into any questions that you guys might have related to in-home or whatever you wanted to kind of discuss with that. Um, if, if, if we're looking at, I think everybody's got kind of a desired outcome, like a goal, and then, and then where you're currently at. And that, that'll always change. Like Brandon's goal now is different than it was last year because you hit your goal by now, you know? And so, but you, you continue to have a different gap. Like I'm now here, but I want to get here. So your gaps, and everybody's gaps different. If you're brand new, your first gap might be, I want to make my first sale. That might be your first gap. By the way, if you've not run a, who in here has not run a pulse on themselves yet? Don't lie. I can tell done this long enough, I could read you. Um, if, if, that's the first thing you should do is make, sell yourself a policy. I, I, I'm not gonna give you 10 minutes on why it works, just trust me it does. I mean, go read a book. They, if, you, if you have a product on yourself, you're way more likely to be able to communicate with conviction and passion so the client's more likely to buy. I had this agent say, man, my budget's tight though. I said, you do know they pay you as earned. So like if you make a payment of a hundred bucks, based off the comps we've got, they'll probably pay you a hundred bucks the next day. So if you can float it for about 12 hours, <laughs> you'll be all right. <laughs> you know, and, and by the way, like, how do you overcome that objection? The client's like, I can't afford it. I mean, either, dude. Hey. <laughs> well, why don't we do this is get back in a couple weeks. We both can afford it. We'll get it. How the hell do you convince them to get a policy if you can't? It's like trying to convince somebody that, to stop drinking and, and you, you, you're you taking a shot. Like, I tell you what, man, I, I, my life's really gone backwards since I started drinking too. You should stop and you take a shot. Let me tell you how to do it. You're like, what? So does that make sense? Like you, you get a pulse on yourself. Um, for, like what Sean would say, have some respect for yourself. You know what I mean? Like you're selling life insurance. Like how do you not have it? How do you believe in it to such regard that you're gonna care enough about a client to get it if you don't have it? That doesn't make any sense. You definitely wanna get a pulse. I know a lot of you, the raise your hand, you just got started though, which is why if you're not yet got one yet, you started yesterday. So that's probably why you don't have it yet, but you should definitely get one right away. Um, all right, so whatever the gap is, you've got a gap. The first thing, so if I look at, uh, one of the benefits I've got is kind of like, a, like, like a, a level of view where I can see different teams and different agents. And so I communicate with them and I see a lot of breakthroughs with different agents. Like where also like, boom, where you'll say, you say like, man, that person, they just, they just went to 20, 30 K. Like how'd that happen? Biggest, biggest reason that happens is leads. Consistent leads. And I know you know it, but you, but the question is how well are you doing it? Andrew quit like four times. Andrew Taylor. The last time he quit, he's like, I quit. I'm like, good dude. Cause I can't, this is a lot of work. Like you quit and then you didn't quit. Like just commit to quitting dude. Like a committed quitter is better than a, you know, half, half butt loser or winner. I just quit. And then he called me back. He's like, uh, dude, I'm going to give it a shot. So why? He's like, my mom called me. Well, actually, he's living at his mom's house. So I don't think she called him. I think she's walking in his room. Uh, <laughs> she's like, you can't, what, what are you quitting for, you wussy? And she might have used a different, you know, <laughs> letter to start it with. And he's like, so I'm just going to give it a shot. And, and what changed was he was getting like 60 leads on one week. And then the next week, he'd get 30. You want to know why? Because 30 from the other week didn't answer. So I don't need as many this week because these ones didn't answer. So I'm going to just get 30 because I'm super smart. I'm going to save money. So I'm going to save money. Guess what the 30 people that don't answer week one do on week two? They don't answer. They don't answer. They're not answer people. <laughs> all right. That's what it is. All right. It's a new phrase we just came up with together. We all created it. That's what they do. They don't answer. 
So instead of like, oh my God, what, what if I can get him on the phone? And like, just get another badge. But, but, but hey, by the way, it was difficult for him and I both because guess what? Every 300 bucks in leads, we weren't looking at it as an employee, a self-employed person. We we're looking at it as an employee. And then as an employee, 300 bucks was me pumping septic tanks for a week and a half and Andrew bagging groceries for a week and a half. So it's like, God, if we can save 300 bucks somehow, that's a week and a half of work we just got for free. You see how you can see it like that? But the reality is, no, it was just different. But but the moment, even even Teresa, I, I, I'm telling you most, Julie's probably the same thing, right? Bleeds, you like, how did Julius get a Hall of Fame in like seven months or something, right? Eight or nine, but we have. Oh, seven looks better. <laughs> oh. But, but think about that. It's fair to say you've got more leads. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Not that deep. Now we could, I could interview Julius for like two hours and it would be phenomenal stuff you would get. But at the end of the day, the biggest takeaway would be, be get more leads. Just get more leads. Have more people to call. Have more shot. Other way, what, what Trey said the, the other day, he always comes up with a really good, like perspective, analogies and stuff. He said, "I'm not very good at gambling," which is very true. Trey's the only person I actually have seen physically, like his body just can't hold on to the money. He has to give it to the casino. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would think like he walked into an orphanage. Like that would make more sense. Like just take it. Oh my God, take it. Like they need it more. Like. Like, I, I'm like, dude, the building's big already, Trey. What are you doing? He's just, he can't. He wins three hands. He puts, I'm all, I'm all in. Why are you all in in four days? I'm just all in. And he loses. Oh, man. I'm going to be at an ATM. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, just, it makes no sense. I'm like, dude, I get why your wife doesn't like to be in the base. Uh, so he's like, but if I played roulette, he's like, the problem with that is there's, there's like, what, 36 numbers. And you drop a ball, and you got to get one of 36. He's like, but the way I looked at this business with leads is if I could drop, because there's only, the slot can only hold one ball, right? He said, if I could drop 36 balls on that dang thing, he's like, I'll put my mortgage on it. Like, I mean, like, why would you not? Like, how do you lose? You drop 36. That's the same thing with leads. You can do it the same exact way. If you've got enough shots, you can't lose. You just can't. It's impossible. Now, if you had 10, 20, 30, you, you don't even have enough for the law of large numbers to work out. This, this is what another thing, like the whole, what does it mean? Like everybody would agree, if I flip a quarter, I have a 50-50 shot to get heads and tail, right? You with me? So if I flip it three times, is it, is it pretty feasible that I could get three heads in a row? Yeah. Very likely, because it's three. I mean, it could definitely happen. That doesn't mean that it's not 50-50 ratio. You know what I'm saying? You get some leads and now it's like you're making a long-term decision based on a short-term outcome. You start thinking like, well, maybe that whole 50-50, Julius says 50-50, he's a liar. This ain't no 50-50. <laughs> I got three in a row. That's that's 100 to zero. Like this ain't right. He's lying. No, it's like flip the coin more, fool. If you flip it 5,000 times, it'll, it'll be like spot on. It might be 49.8 to 50.2, but it's going to be spot on because you've had enough so a lot of times in your business as a new agent, don't screw your mind up because you don't know maybe if it was just the three heads in a row. Keep going, it's going to swing back. Does that make sense? Just stay emotionally level. Don't get high, don't get low. So leads is a single biggest thing. Instant internet life leads, home run, home run. You get them right away. I had this agent call me, he's like, well, man, I had like seven disconnected. I said, dude, you do know like we're paying like half the cost of what everybody else gets them, right? It's like, that's how it was negotiated. There's no lead credits because they're half the cost and more than half are going to be good. And it's a lot of work to try to get lead credits from a vendor. And you're going to come back. All that stuff, they're, they're 11 bucks. Who cares? Throw it away. Call the next one. They're 11 dollars. Like, Julius, you work retro mortgage leads? No, you work mortgage protection leads? Like 60 bucks a lead? Yeah. So it's so like you could get, if you just had, and you probably book what half, if you got 10, you probably book five. So think about that. If you got, so if you got 12 of them and you book one, it's the same ratio. Does that make sense? So just perspective on it. Like it's, but those are phenomenal leads. I mean, we have so many different lead vendors. It's unbelievable. 
it's insane how many lead vendors we've got. So maybe you got to add some final expense Facebook leads to your mix. Maybe it's direct mail leads, you know, mortgage, mortgage protection, direct mail leads. Maybe it's calling leads. Maybe it's instant internet life leads. I don't know, but, but you got to get that right. And it's your business. It's up to you. At the end of the week, if you ever had these come, th this words come out of your mouth and you say, well, um, man, I didn't hit my goal this week because it was leads. That's not a scapegoat. That's you. It's like Chick-fil-A saying, you know what? Sorry, guys. We ran out of chicken sandwiches. I know it's 8 a.m., but the chicken supplier didn't drop off chicken. No, they got backup plans. They got one behind that. Like, they're adults. They're professionals. Like, they can't do that. They're, they can't survive. Think about that. Negative publicity. Chick-fil-A runs out of chicken sandwiches at 9 a.m. 15 people stuck in the drive-thru. Starving. One kid hadn't eaten for seven hours. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? But like, they can't have it happen yet. Somehow we think it's, oh, it's good, it's leave. No, we're not an employee. We're not, like, it's our business. It's up to you to do it. Well, I would say the single biggest thing that changed my business was taking myself out of purchasing leads because I would buy leads one week, buy less or none the next week, buy leads again. And then like, like you were saying, alternate. And then as soon as I had a conversation with Brady, he helped me realize like just, Take your emotion out of the purchasing of leads because for me it was me spending my personal dollars out of my pocket sure. to buy leads that i wasn't sure was going to come back to me it was just the fear factor of is this going to work to just having faith in doing it and buying it weekly consistently the same amount enough to book appointments everything changed yeah everything changed and make it non-negotiable mm -hmm. see like if it's a non-negotiable then, then then it takes no energy or emotion because now, guess what Julius can do? He can put his energy and emotion into effectively dialing the phones and being that much better on the phones. And, and that's like with anything. You know, when you're sitting there and you're deliberating, like, should I, should I do this? Should I? That's a lot of work, too. Like, above the cost of money, your emotion energy also equates an expense. You know? And so that's a big deal, too, where you just like, regardless of how I feel, I have to do this. That's what I'm saying. Like, regardless of how I feel, I have to start down at 7.30 a.m. I got to get to the office. Regardless of how I feel, I always go to my last appointment. Regardless of what I think, I'm, this is what I always do. Like a non-negotiable, just like you have for employees. It's like, hey, like you had when you worked at a different career. That non-negotiable, you absolutely cannot do this. You have to do this. It was just tough. And you didn't argue it. I remember when I had to work Sundays. I wasn't like, man, I don't want to work. I don't want to work. I didn't go and say, sorry, Lowe's, because I did work at Lowe's for about four months. And I dropped a pallet of concrete accidentally on a truck and they fired me. But I was like, sorry, Lowe's, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really, I'm not a Sunday kind of guy. Oh, I'm not a Sunday guy. You know, Sunday is, that's, that's sacred for, for my, for church. They're like, well, you can watch it on YouTube. I mean, like, well, you're, you're not going to work Sunday. We're fired. Like, does that make sense? Like, you just have to have non-negotiables. I couldn't. That's how you got to do it. That's a lot of what Julius is saying. Like, it was a non-negotiable. Next one is, is, uh, is A. So leads, I'll give you an acronym. Let's we'll spell some. So A is activity. Activity cures all. Like make more dials. All right. I don't know what this office looks like. I know my office and this is almost like me. I feel bad even saying it. Like come 830 at night, it's not packed still. And people have left and not hit their appointment goal. That's bad. Like I suck at a lot of things, but again, that was a non-negotiable. Like there was times I got home at nine o'clock at night and I had still missed my appointment goal by one or two, but I was home at nine o'clock at night. So I gave it all I had. I didn't leave time on the clock because I thought that I wasn't going to win still. Does that make sense? So that, that's the activity. And a lot of times, again, you know, activity is between appointments. You get no show, pull over, dial book appointments. Um, you got, you got uh, let's say, six appointments for, what's it, there's a, six appointments for Saturday, right? You have six appointments for Friday. Your first appointment Friday is at, is at 9 a.m. Why don't, why, how about dialing from seven to nine and try to book yourself three more for, you see what I'm saying? That's the activity part. I'm telling you, those are the three that will lead you to 80% of your, your, it's the way it works. It's the extra mile. You always get rewarded for the extra mile. Not always the same day, not always the same week, but the character that's derived and developed because that's what you do, that's what you say you're gonna do, the reputation you build for yourself, the confidence that yields from that, it will always pay dividends. So, so that's activity, activity, activity. I get a no-show, door knock. 
Activity, nonstop, man. While I'm working, I'm working. Ain't nothing, nobody messes with me. I'm hitting my goal. Activity, activity will trump all. That's the next one. Next one is M, mindset. And this is derived a lot from association, like plugging into the calls, right? Um, developing yourself, how you be, you know, what that, that whole, how you see something, how you respond to something, what does this mean? Mindset, like making sure your mind's right. You gotta do it all the time, every day. Just like I said, six years in, I still thought I was lucky. That's mindset. I still was susceptible to get pulled into a negative mindset six years in. It's a daily thing, every day. Get your mind right, plug in the calls. If you're not plugging in the TNLs and all that, like, what are you doing? But, but plugging in all the calls is a big deal. TNLs, all that kind of stuff, developing yourself, growing. Uh, a lot of times, it's, it's the posture to which you're fighting that leads you to get knocked out. Like, you're on your heels, you gotta stay on your toes. You're on your toes by plugging in, association, association, it's a big deal. Meetings, big deal. Taking notes, being intentional, um, leaving. How can I put this into action? How's it applicable? Treating like a real business. Getting your mind right. Next one is E, education. This is developing yourself. This is developing yourself through like, maybe it's advanced market sales, maybe it's annuities, maybe it's IULs. It's developing yourself. It's getting better. It's growing in this business. How to hire? What does it look like? Recruiting. Mindset on recruiting, it's I, I look at myself, this is the best way I explain it. I was kind of like a, you know, like a school teacher. A lot of times they'll, they'll start teaching, right? And then they'll go back to college to get like a, a higher level of education because typically they'll get paid more. Does that make sense? You guys with me on that? So that's kind of how I look at it. Like in the, when I was working, I was, I, was like, I was going to work. But at night, I was trying to get a higher level of education so I could earn more. Like they'll go to night school. Most every school teacher is getting a higher level of education that gets paid more, which most all of them do. Because like if I'm doing this for 20 years, why would I not want to get paid more? All I got to do is, you know, get more education. They're not going to school from nine to five. They're taking night school. So they're sacrificing when, when they're could be at the soccer game, when they could be doing this, when they could be doing that. They're sacrificing for a short period of time because a short sacrifice leads to income that's higher for the rest of their career. This is how I looked at it, education. So the acronym is spelled as lame. I'm going back to my 13-year-old daughter because now she, she said, Dad, that's lame. <laughs> so I, was, I thought an acronym would make you sound smarter. And I thought if you miss your goal, it's lame. So why you miss your goals is that. Does that make sense? How you bridge a gap is that. I say bridge a gap. So that's what it looks like. You know, if, if, you, don't, if you don't hit your goal for the, for the week, I, I would go through that. And I guarantee it's something in there that you could grow, develop, get better, that's gonna put you in a better position this following week to hit your goal. It's something that's gonna be within that, L-A-M-E. It's gonna be something in that. So I hope that makes sense. Any, any questions about any of that stuff? Um, and I hope this helps. I wanted to try to do my best to provide value based off you know, you know, where you guys are at and, and, uh, and the business. And any questions at all? What would you say is like the minimum amount of leads you should have to dial in? I mean, I think that, um, I mean, if you have 50, it's going to be hard not to, you know, hit your goal. Mm -hmm. um, that could be 50 Facebook leads, final expense, 50 instant internet life leads. If you've got 50, I just think that you're going to book 15 appointments, mm -hmm. you know, because um, you do it less, I don't know, maybe, but I, I just like stacking the deck. And then the, a great thing to do is, is, is start hiring pretty, pretty soon. And what I would do every week, is after I, I had hit my goal, I had the next week I had more leads coming in. So I'm not squeezing the other leads because I've already I got more leads coming in. So I, I would give those leads to, to the agent I was working with, you know, the new agent I was bringing on board. And so that, that's what I, that, what I would do. Now, to the point of hiring, I'll touch upon that. Like Andrew Taylor, a lot of the group of that that makes up the West Coast was hired before I even had a license. Like I wasn't confused that income is made by selling and hiring and that this was a phenomenal opportunity. I didn't, it didn't have to be phenomenal for me yet. I knew it was going to be. By the way, going back to, if you don't think it is and you're new, it won't be. You get what you expect. You think you can, you can. If you think you can, you can. Like you can't be double-minded. Like I think it'll work and maybe it won't work. You got to be fixed. Like this is going to work. And so I just, I, I saw the success. I, I didn't know how long my process was going to be. I was willing to, to make it work as long as it was going to be there. I, I knew it wasn't going to be four years 
and college took four years. So I, I just had perspective like that's the way I tricked myself into seeing stuff. So I just started talking to people about it. I had conversations. I was sharing good news. I would talk about everybody else's success stories. By the way, I do the same thing. How I hired when I didn't have a license and I, and I hadn't sold a policy is the same way I hire one market today. I talk about what everybody else is doing. When I hired my next neighbor the other day and he does well, he makes like 300 grand a year, sells medical devices and he's done it for like 25 years. I didn't tell him how well I was doing. I talked about you guys. I told stories like about Brandon and Julie. I, that's what I did. I showed him the Facebook group page. Dude, take a look at this. Look at this person, look at this person. That's what I did. And he's like, man, that's crazy. Can I get my license? I wouldn't mind doing this. That's what works. I didn't say, well, let me tell you what I've done. And by the way, guess what that allowed me to do? In the beginning, I have the stupidest excuse anybody could ever hold on to, which is I'll hire once I, once, once I start doing well. Then the, 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 they're going to want to know what I'm doing. Oh, really? You're that special. <laughs> you're, you're, you're one of them special people, huh? Like everybody's got a way for you to do it. Like you're at such a high, they put you on such a high pedestal that only if you can do something will they possibly have a shot of doing it. What if you suck? Mike Killerman sucked for a long time. And I don't know if he ever really got good at sales. You just didn't. But hey, good thing he didn't wait to get good at selling to hiring. I just don't think he was ever like, but you know what? I wasn't that good at sales. I should have waited. I, I was premature in my approach. <laughs> I don't think he did it. So, so think about that. Hire right away. Share the good news. There's good news everywhere. Take pictures of the Facebook group page and post it on yours. Right? The whole purpose of it is really not for phenomenal training as much as it is this person was a truck driver. This is what they did prior. I mean, Grady's killing with those. I think I saw one. Brandon, were you on one? Julius was on one. I saw that one. Share that. If you're not sharing that, like, what are you doing? Like, get that out there. What if it, what, how, how would you feel? Just, by the way, you're not the magic. The system's the magic. When somebody said, I need some help on my in-home, I was like, that's great. Listen to this audio by Matt Smith. Call me back, let me know what you think. That's what I did. I never spent an hour, and that's the biggest mistake that producers have when they start hiring, is that it's, it's one of those, it's the best, sometimes the best looking excuse is the worst one. Like, like when you when you have something that's justifiable, that's dangerous. It's developing my team, man. Developing, like what? Like you put them in like, like what, I don't understand what is that, what is developing? Like a dark room so they would develop like a picture or what? Like, are they Polaroids? Like what does that mean? So, but but that's that's what you, because I, oh, I was helping them in the home and this and that. No, dude, like, so I was, oh, like, what about annuities? I mean, when I started selling annuities, I was tempted like, man, I can't answer that question. It's like a 30 minute, you know, training. I'm gonna give them this training. They can listen to it. I can keep dialing. So you're never the magic. The system's the magic. That's how you have such rapid phenomenal growth. It's not because people here at FFL are special. Like they're just built with this innate ability to lead at such a high level that in, in, in their, they don't sleep. They work 168 hours. That's why they can work with all these agents. No, they have a really good system and they work smart. Hard, absolutely, but also smart system. Does that make sense, guys? So anyways, as we wrap up, and we, you know, I got to hop on a call here in a minute. Um, I hope this served you well. I really do. My goal was really to do whatever I could to provide value for you. Um, just have, have the right perspective as you go and dial in leads. Make sure you got enough leads. You know, if, if you're not having been prepared today, you know, next week, come Monday, be prepared. <laughs> Plan on Sunday night. Um, lead preparation should happen in advance, but if you haven't, then get on the CR, get some leads, reach out, maybe Julius or whoever else, Brandon, and, and see if they've got something to call. But um, be here and, 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 and then commit to not stop until you get your goal. Like if you could do that for a long enough period of time, for 30, 45 days, and you build this reputation that says, no, I just don't quit. Like that's gonna serve you well to hit different levels that you wouldn't normally have hit if you start to develop this mantra and reputation for yourself that says, well, I know I should, but I just kind of always leave with an excuse. You can't deposit excuses of money. You can't have both. You know what I mean? So just think about that as you go into the day. Um, dialing, if you want to stop for five minutes and listen to a top producer dial, it's great. But they get right back on the phone to start dialing again. And um, don't be the person that walks around and, and, and wants to give advice and feedback, right? If you're a top producer, that's another thing that, that means you're the magic. 
um, just just dial. The best thing that they can see is is the example of how intense you are dialing. And then if you're new, best thing you could do is just dial, and it's going to all work its way out. So I hope that helps.